Um, okay. I want to just want to thank you for Miss Naomi. Thank you for um, this one off um, early morning. Wake up and the grace to be able to be smiling and shining like this. We thank you for our life. Thank you for our journey. And as Naomi takes us on a journey um, into what you have laid on our heart and we're coming into the new, our hearts are hoping to learn to receive of you. We ask that um, not only would we listen, but to be able to translate this into our own personal journeys and into what you are doing in our personal lives. And that even in that, what you're doing in Naomi's life will be multiplied. Many sons will come unto glory through her this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Mr. Naomi, take us away. Amen. Thank you, Doctor. Good morning, everyone. Let me share my screen. And then we begin. Um, he's going to give us PhD thesis, so. <laughs> no, please, not that serious. Okay. Um, so this morning, God wanted to highlight um, stepping into the new. God was talking to me about how um, he has been talking to us about different types of promises that he has given us in various areas of our lives, about how there's now a cycle. So if you look at prophetic words for 2023, there's a shift in cycle. Um, 2023 starts the beginning of a new thing all the way to 2030. And so different prophets are coming, different people are moving in different places. God is doing different things. We entered into the new year and everybody's like, yeah, new year, new me. But um. As soon as Dr. Kweemi called me and she was like, you're taking such a moment, she'll say something about how we, tra we travel into the promise and then most of the time we don't realize that we're tired. And in the she said that, God just said a lot of the time we're actually not stepping fully into the new. And so that's what God wants to talk about today, how to step into the new, what it means to embrace everything that he has said and now not to run away and go back to where you started from. So um, there are seasons and appointed times. Okay, yeah, let's just put this here. So there are seasons and appointed times for different things in our lives. Um, okay, before we go on, I just want to say that can someone be in the chats and just put out scripture for me in the chats? So most of the scripture is written here and then you can just put in the chat so everyone can see it and we can all read it together. Say so someone would do that. Yep, perfect. So um, our first scripture is from Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1 to 11. And if we know the scripture without us going there, I'm also going to assume that today is advanced Bible study class, like you said, PhD. But um, it talks about the different times, so different times and seasons. There is it to everything. There is a season, a time to every purpose. Thank you, Pierre. Under the heaven, there's a time to burn, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill, a time to ill, a time to break down, a time to build up. There's a time to laugh, and there's a time to weep, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get, and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast the way. A time to run and a time to sow. A time to keep quiet and a time to speak. A time to love, a time to eat. A time of war and a time of peace. Um, what profit I think that walketh in that wherein he labored. I have seen the travail which God had given to the sons of men to be exercised in. He that made everything, made it beautiful in his time. And also it sets the world in their hearts so that no one can find out the work that God maketh from beginning to end. So this just describes how God works in different cycles. There's a time for everything. Um, I like Daniel's, Daniel 2 verse 21. He also talks about how God changes times and seasons. He removes kings, he raises up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those that have understanding. 
And if we look at what these time and seasons are just the way Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1 to 11 broke it down, we end up seeing that these changes are like in different things in life. Not just in the world. Neho, Neho may just a minute, okay? Okay. Um, so. Okay, so I unmuted. Good. Yeah. So, um, this just shows us how like these changes may just be in one area of our lives, or it can be happening, or it can be happening in multiple areas at the same time. Um so, so these are changes that happen physically, emotionally, relationally, financially, mentally, and spiritually. It can range from a different type of context. It can be your entry in a new year, either beginning of the year, or it can be God did a change of season with you from Rosh Hashanah. It doesn't even have to be significant at those periods of time. It can just be either moving to a new city. It can be that God is healing you of certain wounds and strongholds and is now bringing you into a new season emotionally. So you're feeling a lot more different than the way you felt before. It can also be that God is bringing you into strategic intentional relationships where he's bringing, he's aligning you to people that would mark your lives or help you in your life in building. It can also be financially. God can say, let's go into a season of lack. And you can also say, let's go into a season of plenty. Just the same way we've been hearing about Joseph, the season where Joseph was helping Egypt to, um, to gather and then to gather in time for what was happening, the farming that was happening. So it can range from anything, very um, really. A new beginning can also be entering a new phase of life with healing, new perspective, and it can be experiencing a different outpouring of God. It can mean revival is coming on you and you are weakened. Um, God says in Isaiah 65 verse 17 that he will create new heavens and new earth and the former things would not be remembered, neither would they come to mind. So um, let's go to the next. So what does God mean by the new? So the new signifies the beginning of something different. Um, when I was doing research, we looked at the Hebrew word, and the Hebrew word means Kadesh. I don't know if it's the pronunciation, Kadesh, Shadesh, any word, but it means to restore and to renew. So in the beginning of something different, God begins to renew, it begins to restore, it begins to do something that was not existing before. Um if we look at Revelation 21, verse 5 to 6, it talks about God seated on the throne and it says, See, I make all things new. Um, there are parts of scripture that says, Behold, all things are passed away and all things become new. When you become a new creature in Christ, so the um the old the old lives and then it becomes cycle for it becomes time markers where different things start to happen in your life. And I like this part because it's um I had it verse six because it says it is done. I am the alpha and I am the omega, the beginning and the end. Um, which means that God is the only one, is the owner of time, is the one that begins, is the one that ends, and so is the one that does everything in his time. Um, so what happens in the new? Like I said, this is an advanced Bible study class. So guys, um, in the new, we have new revelation and outpouring. Deuteronomy 11, I want us to read the scriptures so we can see this. Deuteronomy 11, verse 11 to 15. Mm. Is it here? Deuteronomy 11, verse 11 to 15. Oh. Okay, but the land, thank you, but the land where you go to possess is a land of hills and valleys and drinketh water of the rain of heavens, a land which the Lord thy God careth for. The eyes of the Lord thy God are always on need from the beginning of this year, even unto the end of the year. 
And it shall come to pass if you shall act diligently unto my commandments, which I command you to this day to love the Lord your God, to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul, that I will give you the rain of the land in his due season, the first rain and the latter rain, that ye may gather in thy corn, thy wine, and thy oil. And I will send grass in thy fields for the cattle that thou mayest eat and be full. Um, in some other versions, this is KJV. I don't read, I don't know the Bible in KJV. So some other versions talk about new um new grain and new wine and new oil, which is here in thy oil, thy, in thy corn, thy wine and thine oil. The um ideally when the Bible talks about grain, when the Bible talks about corn, when the Bible talks about bread of life, it's talking about the word of God. So what happens when we transition? The Deuteronomy 11, verse 11 to 15 talks about how God was promising the um, Israelites new land. And it's like, this is a transition season for you. So this is, you are going into a new season and it began to give them instructions. And it's like, if you come, um, if you shall act in diligently unto my commandments. Now, when you get into the new, this is what would happen in the new. You would gather new corn, new wine, and new oil. And so what happens in the new is that God begins to give new revelation. And then he also does a new outpouring. So there's new wine and there's new oil. You begin to see that things are different or you begin to experience God in a different dimension. God begins to give you new instructions. He begins to you would understand that there's like a new power available to you. So it's usually open to you, but you get to take partake of it or access all that God has given to you. Um, in, then we move on to the next one, new voice. Um, these scriptures were like chapters. So that's why I just read story of Gideon, story of Peniel, always then break them down. Um, if we look at what, um, the story of Gideon, we look at the points where Gideon was just a man that was afraid Right. So the angel, if you know the um, story, the angel went to Gideon and he called him and God called him and they're like man of valor. And Gideon is like, hey, oh me, how am I a man of valor? Like it was like the opposite of what God had called him. He was extremely afraid. But God says it's time to go. It's time to fight. It's time to go and deliver Israel. And Gideon was like, yeah, let's do it. Right. After I had asked God for signs and it's like plenty things in the middle. But by the time Gideon was ready to go and fight that battle, Gideon already became very strong in his mouth. Like Gideon was able to gather all of the Israelites, the army of the of the Israel, and he was able to see everybody come together. We're going to go and fight. Gideon even started raising shoulder pads that when he gathered them, he gathered maybe thousands of people. He's not saying, no, I don't need all of you anymore. I need only a certain amount of people because that is what God has said. So Gideon did not develop his voice. His voice did not just come out from anywhere else because he had transitioned it to something different or something new. In the new also, we, we see that God gives supernatural encounters. If you look at the story of Jacob at Peniel, um, Joshua, I'm sorry, not Joshua, Genesis 31, 30 to 32, I think, we see where Jacob left Laban and how he left him and all of that but we also see that once he moved and he started moving he was able to encounter God at Peniel I think Peniel is where he wrestled with God and he removed his hip he dislocated his hip and I like how when we look at if we go deeper deeper into like analysis we see that he removed in the process of battling with God he lets go of himself and he now started like depending on God. So um, I can't remember the preacher, but like you'd see that as he removed the zip, he could not walk anymore. So he needed to use a stick to walk all the days of his life. And he was using a stick. That means he cannot walk. So he's working with a limp so that he can depend on God to actually like move him. But we see that he had a supernatural encounter because he had stepped into the new and he had moved from where God had said you should move. <laughs> Um, we see that in the new, there are new victories and testimonies. We look at the story of the Israelites and the wall of Jericho. Um, at the wall of Jericho, because they had already left the wilderness, I would say that they had left something different and they were already getting there. So as they were about to enter into the new, 
what happened was that something supernatural happened victory and testimony that came from somewhere else i mean all they did was they did not shoot arrows at the wall of jericho they did not fly around it like they just obeyed the instructions of god that said march around the walls of jericho blow the trumpets and that's all that would happen and so the, um, the gods they were able to access new victories they were able to take lands and territories for themselves um i also <laughs> In, I also think that it's very funny and um, it's very important to note that in the new, God gives us new names and identities. So we see that when we come into the new, God begins to tell us, God begins to tell us new things about ourselves that we probably did not know before. So you see that you're getting prophetic words about who you are. God begins to call you different names. God begins to say, this is who you are called to be. This is who I am calling you. So I remember like in maybe HDP, during HDP, somebody tells you you're a prophetic warrior and you've never been that before. And you're like, what does that even mean to me? I'm like, me, how would I be opening my mouth to talk? But we see that what God does when he's calling you out, I was giving you a promise. So he's telling you, let's go on an assignment. Let's go on a journey. Is that God changes your name. Um, in the Bible, we see stories of Paul, we see stories of Abraham, we see stories of Simon. God changed Saul from Saul, God changed Abraham from Abraham, and God changed Simon from... <laughs> I like what you're talking about, because I said God calls you blessed and will tell you allowing your accounts is doing somehow. Like God says, it's time for you to be buoyant but then you're saying that that's not what it was in the old but you now begin to hold on to the new name and the new identity that god has called you to be um okay so so signs that you are in the new or in transition um number one god said it so isaiah 42 isaiah 42 verse 9 The first thing that identifies the year in the new is that God gives you specific instructions and he tells you, Isaiah 42 verse 9, Behold, the former things have come to pass and new things I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. God, like I used to say, God sometimes like I'm, sometimes likes I'm a bob. And so he tells you before time, he tells his friends, just the same way he told Abraham things, just the same way he told the prophets. People that are friends of God, they tend to understand and hear what God is doing. And even sometimes, even without being a friend, God actually still tells you what exactly he's doing. Um, <laughs> if you keep on hearing a prophetic word over and over and over again, you need to pay attention to that word. God, um, I think it was Jade or it was either Jade or Intikan that said it's that if you're getting a particular prophetic word over and over and over again, it's not because God just likes to be a chatterbox. It's not because God just wants to give you some random news and say the same thing over and over again. The reason why is because God is highlighting something to you and you're not paying attention. If you're saying, if God talks to you prophetically through numbers, you're saying numbers over and over again, 11, 11, 9, 11, and you're just discard, discarding them and discarding the way God works, God will keep on showing them to you is trying to get your attention and you need to listen to what he's saying so um also don't let god embarrass you with prophetic words because if god is saying something to you over and over and you're not getting it you'll be surprised that the last time that he tells you you'll be embarrassed i remember one time um tiffany was in nigeria so she had done this program at landmark and i remember like i went for the program and in the process of it god had been telling me like giving me specific instructions about things i needed to do but for some reason maybe you know i'm just delaying or so i was delaying or something and i got um i remember like just walking past so Funny enough, God was already embarrassing me. I was coughing like something was wrong with me and I was trying to figure out why. So I was walking to the bathroom to cough and somebody just came to meet me and she's like, why do you want to hide your light under the bushel? What's wrong with you? And I'm like, oh, God, that's a lot. Like, how are you just going to tell somebody I'm irresponsible? And 
I told, and I was just, I was laughing because I, I didn't feel embarrassed at that point. I was like, that I, I tell God I'll go and reply when I get home. And then she, so I go to the bathroom. As I was coming back, she comes back again and she's like, and she wasn't even rude or like it was not like invasive or anything. She was like smiling at me. And she's just like, she said it again and she started talking about how, like, um, about how God has made me light and I want to go under the, under the table. And I was just laughing because I was like, God had told me that word over and over again, but a line Boron was doing me and now he embarrassed me. It's like, you don't want to hear, let me drag you. And and it wasn't even like embarrassing dragging, but it was just like, no, me listen, I am speaking. So you need to listen. So if you're seeing a pattern in your prophetic words, if you're saying that every time they call you forth, they're saying the same thing to you, there's please listen. Look at it, you're in, you're in the new or you're in transition. Um, I like this one. It's mixed feelings of uncertainty and peace. So if you sign and one of the signs that you're in the new or you're in transition season is that one morning you feel peace about the words that the Lord has given you. The next day you're confused and you're afraid because you're like, how far me? Like God tells you that let's go and do billion dollar company. Or God says, let's travel across the Atlantic. And let's say, you just, you told everybody, I'm not working again. And you feel peace about that situation because you know that the Lord says you should not work. And then unfortunately, common sense, mm -hmm, common sense starts entering the next one. You're like, God, how far? So you're saying I should not work. So you're saying that I should not get this job. I'm like, yeah, you should not get the job. And you're like, wow, just like that. So you begin to have like mixed emotions. You're like, but you still feel peace about your decision. So you're working on a journey. It's like a parallel journey with God where you're like, God, I feel very scared. I feel like I need to do this, but God is still saying, let's do it regardless of anything. So there's that mixed feelings of uncertainty. There's mixed um, mixed feelings of peace. Um, I like this because there's another sign that you're in the new or you're in transition into the new is that you have new cravings and desires. You know the way a pregnant person wakes up and she just wakes up and she's like, I want to eat more and more from under the bridge, Saleko, and you are in... Um, and maybe you, saw, you are living in Ojota and somebody is saying they want to eat food from Saleh. And you're wondering what is wrong with you? Why are you pregnant? As in, I, like pregnant people, I, I'm like judging you. I'm like, why? How did we get here? But that's how it is also when you're carrying something that God is beckoning you, you start having desires that are not yours. So you can wake up and see that. And I'm not talking about desires that are built from self. I'm not talking about the fact that... <laughs> <laughs> oh I like the number matter don't worry we'll come back to that um I'm not talking about desires that maybe you woke up and you're like I want a new house because obviously if I get a new house my life will change and my neighbors will think that I've blown or I can show my family members that they know that God's call upon my life is great or all of those kind of things do you get that's different this is I'm talking about God gives you cravings and desires so John 15 verse 7 talks about the whole of John 15 talks about how if you abide in God what happens is that God begins to change your desires it talks about when you now ask of God God gives you guess why because you are saying exactly what he needs to hear you're saying exactly his will and his desires for you and so God will tell you um I've called you to be um I've called you to go into the engineering field. I have called you to go into um the mountain of art. I've called you to go into the mountain of business or entertainment. And then you now see that suddenly you're having new cravings and new desires. For me, um I think that I did a 360 degree on what it was that I wanted to do. And suddenly I woke up one morning after like sitting down with God and now I have it like everywhere. I'm like strategy consultant because that's what God has said I'm going to be in the next season. God is like, let's go for strategy consulting because I want to teach you strategy. And I'm like, yeah, let's do it. So if I have like a desire to say I want to work in MBMB, M MBB, sorry, the McKinsey's and people is because God woke me up and said, let's get something together. And so as a result of that, I'm able to run to do exactly what God wants to do. 
Um, another sign that you're in the new or transition is desire for more. So um, we look at Psalm 42 verse 1 that talks about um, as the bear pants for water. So you just realize that you're hungry. There's a test in you. There's a restlessness in you where you're like, I need something different. I feel like I should be doing something more. All of you is like panting for more. You're panting for God in terms of spiritual. Like you're asking God, God, what's more? What's different? What's more? You're asking God, God, give me you. You're going into like, you're asking God for, sorry, excuse me, you're asking God for a depth, and that's just what happens, you realize that there's something different, you realize that there's something more, it sort of feels like, I think there's an experiment of how, like, um, they, um, they put, is it animals or insects into a jar like this, and they cover it, and then they try to, like, up out, up out, like, they try to keep up in, that's what happens when you suddenly feel like, I need to come out of where I'm contained, like, there is something more, there's something different that I should be doing, um, the next one is new doors are being shut and you're going through a shaking and then new doors are being opened. If we look at the story of Laban, I'm um, sorry, Jacob, when he was leaving Laban, we see that the doors were being shut at him where they're like, we are pack your load and be going. But then at the same time, doors are being opened to him. So maybe before you were in, you got, um, for example, you were in the event space and God was giving you a contract or God gave you a contract before and it was okay to do it. Um, all of a sudden that door is being shut and you suddenly realize that you can no longer move. You suddenly realize that like, that's not what God is saying. So like your that door is shut for you. And then you realize that like other doors are opening and this way you realize that God's plans and purposes for you, they're different, they're not your own. And you need to like allow, allow yourself to be surrendered to God's plans and purposes. Um, one of the things I realized that you're going through a shaking. Sometimes it might not just be bad things that happen to you, and it's okay for bad things to happen to you. No offense. It's okay for God to just shake you, shake you, shake you until you align back to where you are going. So, so that's what happens. Those shots, new doors open for you. Um, so we're going to do an activation one, um, one minute in one minute, and I have a timer. In one minute, let's just identify and write down with the Holy Spirit. Where in your life do you think you're entering a new season? We've talked about how it can be in different areas of your life. It can be in um, relationships. It can be even Nigeria. If you think Nigeria is entering into a new season and the Holy Spirit tells you that, write it. So wherever I you think that God is stretching you, God is saying, come, let's do something different. Come, let's do something more. If it's your spiritual life that it says that you feel like God is calling you, so based on all of these things, write it down. If it's more than one, you can also write it down, but I want you to write on at least one new season that God is identifying or doing something different or the cycles have changed in your life. So, one minute. <laughs> I like it. I must add my spiritual life and ministry. Okay. So you guys can write this in the chat so we can see it's my spiritual life and ministry. Understanding rest, coming to a place of rest. Emotionally, mentally, God might have taken you to a place where in this season he was saying, let us toil, let us walk. And now he's saying, less time, um, let's understand rest or let's actually sit down. In terms of providing finance to business, okay? So God wants to do something new with the works of your hand. God wants to do something new with finances. God wants to do something new with relationships. I like it. So overall, um, overall we're doing it everywhere so relationships spiritual finances in your workplace relationships and career in my career in friendship in motherhood in work and career overcoming fear relationships and ministry i like that okay so if you've not done that do it financial calling relationships, communities, my personality, I'm relocating. I like it, new places. Me, I'm the queen of new places. I love that one so much. Learning new things for advancement in areas of my careers, relationships and spiritual developments. 
well done guys well done everybody well done everybody so um let's go into the next one so are you tiptoeing into the new are you tiptoeing into the new god is like showing us God wants to show us if we're aligned with what he's doing. So you know how the Bible talks about um, Isaiah, Isaiah 42 that talks about building new things is springing forth. God is like, some of us have decided that we want to put, you know, Sokawi. I don't know if everybody is from Nigeria, but you know, the, the um, when they build Sokawi, the cement or the concrete that is there, God is like, some of us want, you know how, let me give this analogy properly. Yes. So, you know, when God says he wants to do something new, he says, would he not spring forth? So he's going to just bubble forth. Some of us have now decided from the bottom of our hearts that we want to use suck away um, cover to put it and say, no, please don't spring forth. The new will not spring forth in my life. Why? So um, this is that. Let's highlight why we're tiptoeing into the new, why we're sabotaging what it is that God is calling us to do. Why it is that we're putting suck away where God is saying, let us be a spring. Why it is that we're trying to build a dam where God did not tell us to build a dam, where God wants to flow. We were trying to say, no, let me just put cover there. And God is like, why? Did I send you an errand? So um, it's so easy to get very excited about the new, especially if you're prophetic, because Jesus Christ will just be dropping lines to you. Like, you'll just be like, Naomi, do you know that I want to do this and do this and do this? And then, especially when God has preemptively shown you the part of the outcome. So for me, I would say, like, God said, Naomi, um, I don't know if anybody here knows my story. God had said to me that, um, let's go to school. And he started taking me through a journey and like he showed me the end story. So like I remember like even when I had not gotten admission, I would see a vision of myself where I am on the stage. I remember I remember that vision so well. And I would get like flowers, white flowers, and I was wearing all white and like I knew I was graduating. And I was and God be like, and remember God like all through the process, God be like, no, me, you're going to graduate out of the school. And so like I've not even done my process, I've not even gotten any of the extra things involved but like I just knew that that was what God was calling me and so I was excited right but many times we hardly maintain the eye of the excitement so when God gives us prophetic words when God says I want to do something new in your career and finances when God says I'm giving you relationship if you're not Naomi you're like yay there is like so many things oh my god you know things that make me happy when we give somebody a word and the person says, I accept it in thanksgiving, I'm like, look at you. The posture of your heart is so clean compared to mine. Because me, when God gives me a word, I'm like, I'm like calculating. I'm like, God, what are we doing? Where do you want to drag me to? And so like God has been teaching me that the posture of your heart is very important. That we need to like actively like accept what he's doing and maintain it. So next um. I was going to say we struggle most of the time to take hold of the promise or leave transition season, even when there's a green light and the door is widely open. God wants us to keep so God wants us to keep the same energy all through. There's no one just to be doing up and down, up and down, up and down. So yeah. Um, so why is it that we're not able to fully embrace all that He has called us to do? So perspective. Um, Isaiah 55. Says this is a longer scripture, but it's Isaiah 55 1 to 11. So, building the blueprint yourself. <laughs> Many times, God gives us a blueprint, and then we think that we can build it by ourselves. We think that what God is saying is our way, our desires, how we think that we're calculating it. Um, Isaiah 55 talks about our God's ways and our ways, neither eyes, desires, neither anything. Your ways, they are not the ways of human being. However, God wants his ways to become our ways. The more you sit in prayer with God, the more you sit down in intimacy with God, you see that you begin to align with the ways of God. You see that you begin to align with the parts of God. And you see that you get to understand what it is. But as human beings, most of the time, our perspective is flawed. So we begin to see things from our own point of view um the process of me going to school after like i'd applied after i'd applied for school in the u.s like i'd woken up one 
morning and got gate sent to me, let's apply to um, UMass. And you, the funny part of my application was that I didn't hear any other school. And so every time I tried to like apply to another school, I'm currently doing my master's by the way, background story in the US. Um, Every time I tried to apply to another school, God would ask me if that was the instruction that he gave me. And so I wasted like money. Like everybody around me is like, how oh, dare you not apply to another school? So sometimes I'll sit and I'll be like, they're making sense. And so like I would put money and like start an application and the spirit is like, just send you on there. And then I'm like, ah, bye bye you. And I left the money there and I did not bother because I was just like, it makes more sense to obey. Um, After all of that, I had even like got an admission um, I'm just going to summarize. So I'd gotten admission. After I'd gotten my admission, I eventually, <laughs> I'm doing my business analytics um, master's. After I'd gotten admission into school, I end up like sitting down and thinking about like my paperwork. So I'm like, let's go back to Nigeria because I was in New York. So I was like, let's go back to Nigeria to change my paperwork because I was more on, the, I was in a working visa then. So I was like, it just makes sense to enter Nigeria, breeze in, breeze out. Like, you know, we just come and do less play. And everybody that knew that I was applying for school knew that like, I had said that God had told me to do that and I was taking them on a journey. So even my school fees, I don't know where it was going to come from. I don't know. But I was like, Jesus see me do them, so let's do it, right? And this was, I remember in 2021, I had even gone through a process of, I filled my diary. And when I filled my diary, oh my God, this scripture is so funny. When I had filled my diary, um, because I had applied for an MBA program, even though God did not tell me to apply for an MBA program, he had told me specific instructions, like business analytics. But then I looked at the website of the school and I saw that the MBA program they used to give free fellowship. And so I'm like, oh shit, this is the plan for God for my life. They'll pay my school fees as for me. I can do come out money to pay school fees so they will pay my school fees so I was like make sense make sense so this that was a perspective thing that I even failed the first time so I actually I wrote diary for the MBA and I remember like after I wrote my diary I came out of jail and I failed and guess what I did I did not feel any type of way I entered into H&M store and I ended up shop my mother was calling me, my parents were calling me, they're like, what's wrong with you, guy? I'm like, nothing, I'm fine. Everybody's like, you rewrite this. And I was like, God forbid I rewrite this exam. I'm like, I'm fine. I was on the train that day and I was going, like, after shopping souvenir for failure, I decided that let me do errands that did not send me. So I was on the train and in the train, in the train as I was there, um, I got just, it, it was 555 and God sent me to Isaiah 55 and God told me that your ways are not my ways. And it was like, submit your application like that. I submitted my application after submitting my application and I saw that I woke up one morning and the Lord woke me and said, check, they put the results. How can the Lord wake you up and tell you that they rejected you? So I check and like, I wake up and I see that they rejected my admission for MBA program. And I was like, okay, I'm like, I know what I had. I'm like, I had the humors, I had all of these, like I had what I had. So I started in like what I had versus what I did. And I realized that I ended up carrying myself to do MBA when the Lord has specific said business analytics to me. I'm like, okay, maybe in a means, please. So I resubmitted an application even though the application deadlines were over. I literally slept off on the floor and I when I like I just slept off and the day like the final application deadline I was still missed that one and then I submitted another I paid another money and when I did that within one week they gave me admission I remember messaging my coach I'm like ah alignment is sweet why did I just go around in circles in the process of pain in all of those things if I could just obey right I could have just listened instead of trying to look at it from my own way I could have not tried to like make sense of what God had said and I remember fast forward that was just even one of the perspectives I remember now fast forward I carried myself for and I entered Nigeria when I entered Nigeria I did not have visa dates because that it was very like strong like that time the visa people were doing a strong thing so there was no dates so everybody was like how oh, would you have it I was like you don't know me I'm a child of the Lord the Lord Jesus Christ is my father. Immediately I entered Nigeria, they gave me dates. As per they sent me email, like August 10, I'll never forget. And they're like, you have a visa date for August 20 something. And I was like, hell, you see, God is following this story. 
let's also remember that God, please let me take it backwards. That when I was traveling back out of, when I was traveling back to Nigeria, God told me that I should carry only, it was like, guy, yeah, you're traveling light and it was like, you're not packing your things. And you know, yeah, on a walk, I was on a walk with God when he said that to me. And I was like, what do you mean by traveling light? So I ended up traveling, like traveling with only like one box. I had like my wardrobe full. I traveled with like four boxes, but they did not contain my property. They contained like, I'm going to Nigeria to play. So I carry things for people. I'm like buying things. You have seen me, I was like excited about my life, left on my property and I entered Nigeria. Actually, I went for my visa, the day of the visa. You should see my journals. I'm, I'm not in my house, like with my other where I live, <laughs> all my journals. And I wrote down that morning, I really woke up and I was like, God, it's time for your promise to be aligned in my life. I, Massachusetts, here I come. Like, I really wrote it that morning. I was like, ah, finally, Naomi leaves the wilderness and enters into the promised land. That was how I shall enter my visa office. So, and I was standing there and then I just random started and I started stuttering. And next thing she gave me blue paper. I was like, me? I was like, wow. I didn't even say anything to anybody. I just started the blue paper. You know, when you walk all the way, I don't know if you guys know visa office in BI. I did, I did not look left and right. I'm not lying. Like normally I'll even stand up. I'll be like, oh my God, like I needed to call somebody. I feel, I think I had money in my, maybe God knew. So I had money in my envelope. Because normally I'll maybe call someone, or maybe the driver or like an Uber or something. I did not even call anybody. Now, so I just they walk. I walked all the way to the bus stop. I yes, blue letter is a rejection paper. I walked all the way to the bus stop. I crossed the road. I entered Modware bus, bus like this. I entered, I finished my face. I was just looking at like, God, you shame me. Because why do you do this to me? Why do you never send me to pack my property and come back to Nigeria? And I remember, like, I did not talk to anybody, like, for, like, hours. Everybody was waiting for me as usual. Everybody's like, no, what has happened? I was just looking at, like, God, you carry me on this journey to say no. If I was stuttering, so, the, in, the person talking, she could not just do wing and give me favor. Or, like, nobody expected because everybody thought God was with me on the journey. And I remember, like, just sitting down at home. And I was like, what am I supposed to do in my life? I'm like everything is in the u.s i'm like i don't know so everybody was like trying everybody's like let's keep trying like let's get another this let's get another this let's do this and one of those days okay um, in fact if you see god had given me like plenty of prophetic words about nigeria it's like in nigeria you do this do this me i thought i was like one day i haven't started i was like so it's only two weeks vacation i came for what do you mean by all this prophetic word it's not possible right in the two weeks i came for not knowing that man god had a plan for me to do one year and i was just like okay so i end up going back um i end up going home and processing everything and i remember like i was one day i followed my sister to work in union bank and as we were coming back she no okay so she dropped me so i was taking an uber back home and i'd applied for another visa date and they just sent me that they're not giving me the visa date. I was looking at it. I didn't want to tell anybody, but I didn't even bother going home. I just followed my, I just went all the way to VGC. I changed on my Uber app. I was like, I'm going to sit down in my friend's house because can not I go to the house alone? Maybe I will just, they think I'm about how God has disappointed me. So I went to my friend's house. And on that journey to VGC, I remember God telling me, Naomi, let's take a detour. And I was like, what do you mean by a detour? And it was like, let's take a detour from it. And let's sit in Nigeria and let's stay in Nigeria. And I was like, okay. And immediately I called everybody. I called my coach. I'm like, I'm deferring. Everyone's like, what do you mean by deferring? I'm like, I'm deferring. Why stretching it too much? We're doing running around. We're doing back and forth. I'm not doing, I don't have the capability. I'll wake up in the morning. I'll be doing online classes. I'm like, I can't be begging anybody. Let's just defer. And God was like, here, let's defer. And so something that I thought was a 2021 promise it's just this year I went to school where I did one year in Nigeria that was like very vital in my life. And then this year, I wasn't even, I'm not going to lie, okay, I'll get back to that. I'll get to that in the next point. But I remember like, it made me realize that our ways are literally not God's ways. What we think is the timing. I get that God has said that you will do this and do this and do this. It's really not the same thing. Um. Another thing about perspective is that 
if God give you an instruction in season one, it might not be the same instruction in season two. If God said to Shiloh in season one, and even though 520,000 people were healed, tomorrow you can come and say, don't do that camp again. And you have no choice than to obey God if you're fully surrendered and you want God's will and plans for your life. Look at the story of David, where David goes to where he wanted to fight the feelings things. He asked God, he said, how far should I do it like this? The first time God says, he came back again and he asked, God, how should I do it? Because, I mean, if you keep on trying to build this by yourself, you realize say, that the angels will tell you I'm not involved. Because even the resources that God has given you, you realize that you don't get to access them because you're building the blueprints yourself. For example, God can give you a blueprint with the house of four rooms. Do you go ahead and build five rooms because you think you're great? You're like, let me just add some extra to it. And God is like, did I send you an errand to add extra to it? Let us build what I am saying you should build. Let us build together. God wants to build together with us. Another thing we do is that we run away from building with God. We build by ourselves. If you build by yourself, guess what? You'll build more house because you don't get to build the resources that God has given you to build. You would build a mud house when God is saying, I want to build a house full of concrete. I want to build a house that is strong, a house that cannot be moved by the wind, a house that would stay where it's supposed to be that would be able to withstand any storm of life but we're just like no let me start building and sometimes god did not give you go ahead to build though so start looking at it understanding the time so that's what perspective is about building the blueprints with god um another thing that would make us tiptoe is tests sometimes we may not pass the test that god has given us to pass <laughs> First of all, God will make sure that you have the capacity to carry what is pouring into you and handle where he's taking you to. And so if you think that it's you that you have seen Shege Pro Max is a lie, I can bet you that you have not. I can bet you that the things that you think that you are going through is not as deep as you think it is. And you just need to surrender and be quiet and allow God to do his work in you. Um, please, can somebody write Luke 5, 36, verse 38? Luke 5, 36, verse 38. So I'm going to put it up in the scripture, in the um, chat. The five version, I don't know anything, but yeah, Luke 5, 36, 38. Yep. Then he spoke a parable to them. No one puts a piece, no one tears out a piece of a new garment. Ugh. All of you calm down now. Let me read. Me. <laughs> no one tears a piece out of a new garment to patch an old one. Otherwise, they would have turned the new garments and the patch from the new would not match the old. And no one pours new wine into old wine skins. Otherwise, the new wine will burst the skins. The wine will run out and the new and the wine skins will be ruined. Nope, new wine must be pointed to new wine skins. I like the version that she puts. It says out there, no, new wine must be poured into new wine skins. And so God will make you shed the old because you need to let it go. It would make you not wear the torn garment. God is not patching the old to put the new. Um, God will take you on test can somebody put first Corinthians 10 to 10. God will take you through test. Um, I like how when PU was talking about the elite school, they was talking about how you will go through test of betrayal, you go through test of disappointment, you will go through test of envy, false accusation. As per the people that are your guy, 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 they're the one that will be offending you and God will tell you stay there. You'll be like, God, how far this disrespect? I remember like <laughs> It's so funny. This in January, I remember like people kept on offending me. And I was just like, God, this disrespect has gone on for so long. I remember one morning, like I woke up, like I saw a text at 3 a.m. I was like, why? I really typed it out. I was like, I typed on my phone, I started seeing the text. I was like, so do you have sense? And then I'm realizing I do not send it, guys. 
I, I decided to be a responsible child of God. I had to send this, like, I took a screenshot of it and I sent it to people that I'm accountable. So I'm like, can you see what I'm doing in the middle of the night because I'm offended? And the next morning, I remember waking up and I was just like, God, I stood in the bathroom because I could have plenty of people in the house and I know how to shout. I stood, I'm like, God, this person is, um, ignore me, but or mind me, I'm going, I'm like, I was, I, that was how it was with God, I was like, God, this person is very stupid, this person is going on for this drama, a very long drama that I think that we don't need to be doing, I'm like, God, I feel like it's bothering me a lot, and I just went on, I actually cursed the person out to God, and when I finished, I was like, I cannot curse in real life, like, because it's not ideal so i've come to you to come and say that i don't think this person is normal these people actually they are normal people and i remember that the coach just told me it was like the devil is probing you your dear being offended it's like tricking you and instead of to pass your test and move on you you want to be going in cycles of just passing your test and what's that jimmy and um you start talking to me about like oh like for when we're in new seasons, God will give us tests to be able to see that. Have you moved past this thing? Are you still offended? The Bible says, what to you that are offended? What to be offended? So both of you together. So why are you offended? Leave it alone. And people would disappoint you. When I was saying that, like, I remember, like, I had to sit down and ill from disappointment of, what's it called? Of people, of disappointment that nobody would do anything for me. Like, I need to stop having strange expectations and, like, learn to, like, deal with God and focus on God. I've also learned that, see guys, God will not give you anything beyond what you're able to handle. And so no temptation has overtaken you except that which is common. So God is faithful and you will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able. But with the temptation, you also uh, make the way of escape so you can be able to bear it. Um, PO explains all of this. So false accusation, envy, all of them until the nature of Jesus Christ is formed in you. You know, all of these things, you know, at the end of the day, what I came to conclusion is that I kept on repenting over and over again, where I'm like, God, I want it to be that your nature is found in me. If all of it is that you're making me go through these things, so that is you that is in me, that is you that we're getting, that's fine, I agree. So I wake up in the morning and I'm like, God, oh my heart, I am upset, I am offended. I am disappointed. This person is doing this. And I remember like one day I woke up and I said, I'm cutting this person. Like another person, I was like, I'm cutting this person. Up. And I was like, no, there, you stayed there because I asked you to stay there. I remember like bringing out my phone and writing a message and saying, I love you. And I remember I'm like, I dislike you so much. And I don't think we should be friends anymore because you are making me stressed. But God would be like, no, stay there because you need to allow those things to be formed in you. James 1 verse 2 to 4. Um, James 1 to, to 4. <laughs> James 1 to the me right. I don't want to, I just want to go. I don't even want to be explained. So yeah, James 1 to the 4. To the four. Bam, bam, bam. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Um, one of the things that I would say that you should use to access your life if the nature of God is being formed in you over and over by the test that you go through is the beatitudes. So Matthew chapter five, blessed are you when you mourn, blessed are your earth when you hunger and test for righteousness. All of the tests would make sure that those are the things that are formed in you. So you have to check and say, God, how far am I going through the place where I'm mourning? Am I going through the place where this is happening? Am I going through this, 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 and this? It's a very good scorecard for you to check that you are actually passing your test. Another thing is God reveals himself in different dimensions through the different problems that you go through. Um, the only reason why Abraham was able to say God is Jehovah Jireh is because he was able to experience God as Jehovah Jireh. The only reason why a guy was able to say God is Elroy is because she was able to experience the God that sees her. And so, sorry guys, God will allow you to go through poverty so that he can reveal himself as Jehovah Jireh. 
so that he can tell you that the Dr. is smiling, she knows. So they'll tell her that he has given her billion money that now she's happy about. It's because he wants you to go through that season so that you can experience him. The point where you don't know anything so that you can depend on him for wisdom. The point where you realize that it's not yourself or anything that you own, it's just God. And so that's another reason why we go through tests. Also, the nature of God formed in you gives you access into the door. Tommy always gives another, um, Tommy always gives this analogy of you, if you follow Tommy, you would hear it a lot about how he used his brother's iPad. He used his brother's iPad because image equals to access. So once you look like God, once you have access, because the nature of God has been form, formed in you, you can knock on the door and they will open the door. The angels will say, yes, I'm involved because you look like God. God, you, you've allowed God to walk yourself in, to walk himself inside you and make you die to self. And God will not be like, hell, yeah, let's do it. Um, it reminds me of, it reminds me of if you follow on Instagram, there's this boy that used to, that does, um, that does kids about how Gabriel Angel, um, sorry, Angel Gabriel speaking or Angel Michael. And he will talk to you about like the terms of contracts that like you do when God gives you, like some people will call and say, oh, I feel like I want a promotion in my job. And it's like, this is the terms of contract. If you are like this and like this and like this, then the door would be opened onto you. So sometimes God is withholding the promises until you just look like him and you die to self. So that's one. Then there might be weights from the past season. You might be holding on to disappointments, distrust, fear, anxiety, walls, shame, guilt, and resentment from the last season. I know that you've seen Shige. I know that life has dealt you many difficult cards. I know that it just looks as if it would never end. And I know that dramatic things happen to you. But what God wants to do is that he wants to let go and make you light. It wants to make you light. So God says his yoke is not heavy. So many times we're carrying baggages. We're carrying baggages that wouldn't even allow us to enter into the promised land. Imagine if when the Israelites were walking across the gem, walls of Jericho, they had like heavy baggages. I'm sure that like it, they would not have been able to walk, let's be honest. And so what God wants to do is that God wants to let go of the things that are holding you back because you can't really enter. If you're holding on to fear, the Bible talks about fear, fearful people have special portion in lake of fire. If you're holding on to disappointment, if you're holding on to distress, if you're holding on to anxiety, walls that you built, I know that they disappointed you. If you like pull wall like this and say never to people, you will not move forward in your life. And so what God wants to do is that God just wants to break everything from you before you are able to move into the new. I like this one a lot. You really like the old. You have made the old a monument and idol. Um, I, write, I wrote here, don't build monuments with prophecy. God is a movement. Let me just tiny vulnerability moment for you guys before we go. Um, so one of um, hi, this is this is a painful, vulnerable moment, but I'll I'll tell you guys. So one of the things that God has been enlightening to me is that God has been telling me that Naomi let's do relationship, right? Romance relationship. And I'm like, I don't really want to do that because I've gotten used to like being with God, sitting down with God. And I don't like the stress, the life stress of human beings like that, truthfully speaking. So God has been dragging me on it. And I'm like, no, if I do it now, something will, somebody will annoy me or I will just be going in circles or something. And I remember like God beginning of the year God had said like let's do a vision but and I was looking at it so I was very excited about saying God said we're well, doing strategic consulting and that's why I am and I'm excited about the promises of God and what God is using me to build but then I realized like in this one it was very difficult for me to accept it just because God had like God had said to me God, not necessarily God had set me apart for a specific period of time and so because I was very comfortable in that season it now felt very weird and now God is saying, let's do something different. And I'm like, no, let's stay here. And I remember like my friend was telling me, you've made it an idol and now it needs to be broken off because excuse me, why are you single and trying to make it an idol? Enter what God is doing. And so I'm like, okay. So we need to move with God. 
if we don't build monuments to the prophet, if God says this is what it is for this period of time, then that's what it is. And then we move, move with God when God is moving. You look back every time like Lord's time, like Lord's wife. Please let's go of FOMO. FOMO is fear of missing out. It's not that deep. You see that God has say, let's leave your job. And then every day you're still going back to the job to go and visit somebody. Why? Sleep in your house. Stop trying to be doing, I just need to be there. You don't need to be there. You don't need to look back. Lot's wife, she just looked back and she turned into salt. It obviously, you cannot turn into salt in this period of time, but you're just dragging yourself and you're not moving forward with the promises of God. Um, you also might be afraid of uncertainty like Oprah. I'm sorry I spelled this wrong, but Oprah in wrote, um, she did not follow them because she did not know what to expect. She was afraid that she was rather very comfortable in where she was. So she just said, I would rather stay here. So that might be you. You might just really like the old, which doesn't make any sense. Um, distractions. I know I had mentioned like um, I do, um, drama, temptations and all of those things before in test. But I know that this is very important because um in the new season sorry if you're trying to enter the new season the devil comes with distractions it will test you with one thing that maybe you before used to fight maybe you're fighting the spirit of lust before in your past life when you see that and sometimes I, i've i've come to like pm pi will say ec ec would say that you master the devil because it's very corny. So you begin to understand patterns. I mean, I've come to understand patterns. I'm like, this, this, this is happening. I'm offended. They're dragging me. I'm thinking about strange things. I'm like, ah, oh, there's something new that is about to happen in my life. Please leave me alone. Flee from me. If you flee from the devil, like if you resist the devil and flee from him, then it will be fine. So be able to watch out for those things. So seeing temptations, idolatry, what is it that you've put above God? What is the drama happening in your life? You see, I told myself, oh, please, what well, I'm playing all the drama happening. I know that dramatic things happen to me. I know that I've been doing strange things or like strange things happen, but like I'm moving on because those things are distractions. If not, you will just stay in that wound and you would not like move on from to where God is taking you to, you'll just be dwelling on the old, which makes no sense. Um, activation. So, guys, ask the Holy Spirit what ways you're tiptoeing into the new based on that, and let's repent. So, you don't have to put it into the chat. So, I can quickly run. We have like maybe 15 more minutes. So, Let's ask the Holy Spirit, what ways am I tiptoeing into the new? What ways is it that you need me to shed? What are the things that I'm holding back? What are the things that we need to just let go of in this new season? Am I holding on to the weight of disappointment? Am I holding on to shame? Am I holding on to guilt? Even the shame that I did not finish my last season well, even the shame that I felt like I'm not good enough, I did not do it, am I holding on to that? Ask the Lord, what is it? I know that you probably have failed relationships, relationships that you feel like God gave you, but it did not work. Deal with this with God. God is just saying, I heard God say that, like he wants to just strip you of all of the baggages. So there are every bag that people are carrying on their bag that is holding them from entering the new. And God just wants to like, let it go. So I just want us to like, release all of that before we move on like so many minutes yeah that's great and i can take it back so if you have to like sit with god or see that In this perspective, ask God that God, am I seeing with your eyes? Am I looking at this by myself? Ask God that God, am I passing the test that you've given me? 
gonna make her in the old god do i need to let go of idolatry and the things that i'm holding on to and just repent <sighs> thank you jesus thank you holy spirits i like that so yeah um so now um now that we've done it and we're ready to let's go out to stabilize yourself in the new i'm just going to breeze through this because of time um so first of all the posture of our ads needs to be one of submission and surrender you need to realize that god is lord jesus is lord my dad says this thing about how many times as christians we um we come to god and we ask god for um to become our savior we say god be our savior be our daddy be our friend be all of those things and we never remember the part of the lordship of god god is sovereign and we need to know that in our work with god the first thing we need to do is we need to surrender we need to submit you are just a person on the chess game you need to be able to understand the sovereignty of god and who god is and so god needs us to be able to submit to his authority you know when you submit as a servant you bow down and be like whatever it is that you say that's what i'm doing you take orders from the king and we're very guilty this part is like making me very sober because we're very guilty of throwing tantrums i'm a tantrum child i think i've stopped after reading heavenly man ah i saw things in that book heavenly mom be talking about how he's in prison and he's not throwing tantrums and i'm like naomi you've not even gone to prison why are you whining so but God wants us to just submit to his lordship and surrender to him. Another posture of the earth is intimacy. Um, so we need to like realize that you cannot do anything. Hey? You cannot do anything by yourself. Rather, you need to like understand that you need to actively sit down with God and listen to what he's saying and how he's saying it. I remember when I had gotten the dream of my um when I knew the course to study for school, in the dream that I had, um, I had this, I, I was at a coffee shop with a man and he was sitting down there and then like we were just in together and he was just telling me about like everything I'd ever wanted to do, like everything I knew that I was. He was talking about like breaking problems, solving problems. I didn't even know that that course existed or that job title existed. And then I asked him and I was like, what's that? And he was like business analysis. And I was like, I want to know more about it. So he gave me like a stack of papers and I was like, thank you so much. And I took the papers and I remember like after... I took the papers. It was in the coffee shop, remember? And I said I should come for a kiss. And I was like, no, I don't be doing PDA. Take your papers back. I'm not doing. And so, like, it was petty. And he took his papers back. But, and it was, and he took his papers back. And I was like, no, like, come back, please. Like, I need those papers for my life. So I came back and I kissed him. And I woke up and I realized, like, that kiss meant intimacy. If you do it by yourself, you need to be like in a love relationship with God to be able to understand his plans and purposes for you and to be able to walk with him in alignment. If you do it by yourself, you're just going to be there doing religious things where you be like, you have to work for God. You have to, you're working for identity and not necessarily working from identity. So the posture of our art is very important expectancy and faith i remember like at the beginning of this i was saying that like every time i give prophetic word and i see people that say i receive it with thanksgiving i'm like yay i'm like very happy for them because i'm like they're expectant already so i'm training myself to like stop permutating and combinating things for god and just be like yes god if you say it i receive it and i'm expectant strength and courage um, God has been highlighting what strength means, which is very like f- funny. I remember like doing this episode like two years ago, and yesterday God just reminded me of it. But what strength means is that f- mental fortitude. It talks about focus. It's not talking about physical. It's not talking about physical strength or anything like that. If we look at strength, remember how like in Joshua one where God was telling Joshua over and over, he's like, be strong and courageous, be strong and courageous. Obviously, you can tell that God was not saying, go to the gym, train, even though it might have looked like that because they knew they were going to fight enemies. So it made sense if God was saying, like, be physically strong to them. 
but he said it like three times. You get why God said, said um, he said, he said, he said, he said, he said, he said, and he's like, ah, it's very important that God is saying it because God, what, what God was going to tell him to do, it did not make any sense. So his focus needed to be focused. His mental mind needed to be like fortified before he got there. And he needed to have that courage. And so that's why when Jesus said, yeah, maybe they walk around Jericho, it wasn't strange for him because he was like, okay, because if you're not, if your mind is not like strong enough, you would not be able to move when God is saying you should move because you would think about it, overanalyze it. Like, did you think about how like they're like, they said I should walk around Jericho to bring down the walls? But Joshua knew that's why God said, like, guy be strong because waiting, I won't tell you, it will shock you. So you just have to move like that. So, yeah, that's um, about just going to do one more activation. I think let's choose to surrender to the Lordship of God without throwing tantrums. So, let's just say in one line and just say to God, God, we surrender to you, we submit to your authority, and we choose your ways. We're done throwing tantrums. We want all that you want, and we're fully aligned with you. Amen. And then, yep. So how to stay in the new, now that we've let go of all of the old and all of these things. Huh, I'm sorry, guys. I did not write the scripture in this place. But the first one is get the instructions and write them down. So um, write the vision for the new, all the instructions that it is that God is giving you, minor, major, all of them, make it plain. Please, guys. I'm not involved if you go ahead and write the desires of yours that Jesus did not give you. It's not my, I did not send you on errand because it would just lead to disaster. I write new year, I want new walls, I want new deeds. And you not say that it did not, it did not happen in the future. I'm not involved. But what God wants you to do is that he wants you to write the vision. He wants you to make it plain. God made me do a vision board this year for the first time. That's layers and layers. And he made me sit down to do it. Where it's like everything that I've said to you, write it back on the vision board. So you are seeing it. So your mind begins to understand that this is what I'm taking you. I wrote on my vision board, I was like, I have the ability to dream big. Because even though you this, even if your mind is not seeing where God is seeing or what all the things that God is saying, and not necessarily in terms of like, you need to have more money, all of those things. I write it down so you're able to see it. The scripture is Abacock. Please, I'm not, all of you that know the Bible accurately, please write down the scripture. But the one that talks about making the vision plain in Abacock, I'm sure I didn't write out the scripture. Um, the next one is meditate and confess. So God speaks, you hear, you speak it, and your heart hears it. Bible talks about how faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So God speaks to you and then you hear it. Your heart, you now continue speaking it out so that your heart hears it. One of the things that I started doing was that I started um one of the things that I started, sorry, excuse me. One of the things that I started doing was I started like reading it out like every day. So I'm like, it doesn't make any sense to me, but let's be reading it out. Let's be looking at it until I become accustomed to it. I told myself, like, I refuse to self-sabotage anything that God is doing in my life. I would sit down there and do it with God. So position your heart to receive and get accustomed to it. The Bible talks about Joshua 1 verse 5, about like if you meditate, then you'll be able to reap good success. So guard your arts. Check out of the arts flows. Um, huh. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Please write it out. But out of the arts flows the issues of life. Paraphrased. Um, so we need to be able to check with your spirit to make sure that our arts is pure. Thank you, P.O. Abacus 2, verse 23. So we need to be able to check with your spirit to ensure that your art is pure. You need to be able to sit down and say, God, there is bitterness forming inside me. There was a day that I mistakenly, it's a mistake, guys. There was a day that I mistakenly said to somebody that, my staff was talking to me about somebody that was stressing me out. And I was like, she said he's traveling. Me and I opened my mouth and said, I hope that the plane crashes. And I was like, Naomi, how did you get to the point where you're wishing wickedness on somebody? And if you even wish the plane crashes, 
other human beings are dying. And that was when I started checking my heart and repenting where I'm like, God, do oh, it's as if I am moving, like I'm becoming offended. I am becoming, I'm allowing bitterness to get to take root in me and all of those things. So you need to constantly allow him for you. You need to constantly allow him to sanctify you, sanctify yourself through the word of God. If not, that's the world. Full of people that have sins, I wrote it as it is. There are people that have taken a hold of the promise or weaknesses of the inheritance, find them and sit under their leadership or under their friendship. Sometimes it might be your mates. The people that are seeing it, the people that have weaknesses. Hebrews 6, verse 12, follow these people when it feels like you're confused, when it feels like you don't have sins, when it feels like you want to sit down and say, I'm not doing it again, reach out to these people. Let them speak what God has said over you until you begin to align. That way, you also need to sit down with strategy, like people that would, uh, what's it called, would be able to strategize with you and say, you're doing this the wrong way. That would correct your past. People that would mentor you and give you that over your lives. Um, pray and watch. Like I said, the devil is an adversary looking to steal, kill, and destroy um i remember um if you if you read this thing one of my the testimony i wrote about like when i was writing an exam and i didn't and i didn't see and i was asking god for the answer so god had told me to read something before the answer like i felt a knowing in my spirit but like i just skipped it and i did not see the image of the graph when i was writing the exam and then i enter into the exam wall and i see um, I say that they say we should draw the graph and I'm just like I don't know what the graph looks like so I'm like God like let's do some magic right and I'm like God Alpha do you want to tell me or show me a vision of what the graph looks like I was dragging every God but I was just writing my exam and dragging that she had no see vision obviously but in the process of that when I came out when I came out of the exam I felt very somehow because I'm like God you could have just like taught me this exam or something apparently I wrote the exam in God but maybe I was trying to deceive myself and I remember that the I was like I was like God made me a long day or day like you did not come true like when I needed it to come true and I did not know that like he had already written exam by himself and I remember like I was just like God just day or day that night I fought like I had like all the strangest thoughts in the world come to me I'm dealing with this dealing with that dealing with that and I feel like God allowed me to go through that. And the next morning, he woke me up and he was like, let's go to John 10, John 10, that talks about the shepherd. Um, and he was like, as a child of God, where you are the sheep of God, God puts you in a sheep pen. Now the devil is looking to still kill and destroy. He's outside. Sorry, guys, I do think I spelled adversary rights, but sorry. The devil is outside and is looking as a wolf. He's looking to enter into the sheep pen. Now imagine where you now say, God, I'm not talking to you, God, we're fighting. You already say, I'm going out of the sheep pen. And the devil is already there trying to enter into it. So you had the first prey that he gets and he carries you. And then you realize that. You're just being used, like you're already in the enemy's camp, which doesn't even make any sense. And so you need to actively, Luke 21, 34 to 36 talks about that. You need to actively be watching what is it that is happening. The devil, see, it, I don't know why people think that the devil likes you. He does not like you. He knows your future more than you do. He knows the things that God has called you to be. He knows that God has called you to be a witness for him. He knows that God has called you a deliverer. He knows that God has called you to be a prophet to nations. He knows that God has called you to be light. And you think that the devil would not come for you. Who do you think you are exactly? When I realized that I'm like, oh, mom, ah, we move it highways. So just make sure that you watch and you pray. And yes, um, in the process of watching and praying, when you realize that you signed a, a contract with God or a covenant with God about certain things, and you realize that the circumstances are not moving according to terms of contract, enter the courts of heaven. Peter, Peter talk about courts of heaven on Sunday. May I have entered courts of heaven like 20 times all through this week. I'm like, God, how far now? Please, this is what you said. 
Remind God of what both of you said together. Remind him of the covenants that you people signed. He signed Abraham, he signed contract with Abraham. Remind him that, God, this is what you said and this is how you said it. What is happening? Is it that I've not passed my test? Is it that this is where you now begin to test and watch? Is it that my heart is not good? Is it that you're saying I should wait? Or is it that there is delay in my life? I beg. Let's see. So let's know what it is that we're dealing with. Obey. Um, <clears throat> God is not going to give you fresh instructions until you obey the previous ones. Um, can we see Genesis 12, verse 1 to 3? I think this talks about Abraham when God said, move. Uh, I looked at it and looked at it. God gave him instruction. Next thing, Abraham packed his bag and is moving. I'm like, wow, just like that. Obviously, I don't know if he thought about it. I don't know if he thought. I don't know if he did anything, but like he just obeyed. One of the things that I have learned a, a, in my work with God is oh, I don't I don't like delayed obedience because it makes me feel very uncomfortable. So when like I'm saying that people do like if God wakes me up and says message this person, I can cry as I'm messaging the person, but I'll be messaging you and I'll just be like, God, you said it, let us do it now, 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 and move on with it. If God say give one thousand dollars and I have one thousand dollars. And I know that after I give the one thousand dollars, I know we'll get them again. I'll give it to and then I'll not say, okay, now I'm poor. What do you want us to do? right now i don't have any money again what do you want us to do but that point where you now start calculating and calculating you just end up like over analyzing what it is that is saying and at some point it leaves you because it's like i'm not involved in this thing that you're doing you need to obey before you get first instructions another thing is that many times we're like god i needed to confirm your word i need clarity and god has said that all to you 500 times but you still say you want clarity you want a sign you want thunder to fly from everyone you're like, God, if I sleep now, let me wake up on the side of my bed. And then you see a sign written there. Guy, obey the instruction they've given you instead of waiting for a new one. When you move, you will now get fresh instructions. You will now say that this is what it's saying. You see that, okay, this is what is, this is the people is moving you to, or this is what is aligning you to. And then fight the good fight of faith, guys. Stop trying to delist from the army. I know that last week, everybody saw things. So at the end, they were like, God, am I still in your army? Am I still a warrior? I don't want to be strong warriors because I suffered. When you pick up your armor and fight, um, the armor of God, if you don't know where it is, Ephesians chapter 6, enter, read your Bible and learn it, pick it up and fight. Fight the good fight of faith. The process of even delisting from the army is too much. Is it devil that's fighting you now wants to join the side? I'm like, how? Oh. Like somebody that you've been fighting, you now wake up and say, I'm not doing it again. Let me follow you. It doesn't even make sense. Just fight your fights and do not grow weary. Keep swinging your seeds. Galatians 6 verse 9 talks about how oh, keep doing good regardless. Um, sow your seeds, fight your fights. Remember that God is the author and finisher of your faith. One of the things that I've learned in this life with God is that it's God that gives you promise, Abby, is the one that will finish it. I don't know why we always forget that God is finisher. So we we'll remember that is the author. We'll be like, yeah, he just gave me something. Then when we start with the journey, we forget that is the one that can finish it. And that's why the scripture that we started with in Revelations talks about how God is the Alpha and the Omega. It's the beginning and the end. Allow him to do his work. Allow him to do everything that he's doing in your life. So yeah, um, God is willing to reveal himself to you. Is our marriage, I really like this word of God and God kept highlighting it over and over. So ask him to reveal himself to you in the ways that he wants to reveal himself to you. Ask him to break down everything in what dimensions. You can ask him, God, what dimensions are you revealing yourself to me? You can write this in the chat. God, how do you want to reveal yourself to me in this season? Um, what ways are you taking me? Do you want to review yourself as your vagary? Do you want to review yourself as judge? Do you want to review yourself as father? But God is willing to reveal himself to you. God is also willing to speak and give you instructions. He's willing to give you fresh insights. He's willing to give you himself. He's willing to give you supernatural encounters. He's willing to pour himself out to you. He's willing to give you new revelation. He's willing to teach you the word of God by himself. He's willing to... Um, fill your mouth with his words and is willing to pour out his spirit i sense that one of the things that is willing to do is that he's willing to open your heart and just take you deeper into love with him god is willing to give you like a deeper depth sorry a deeper and depth same thing but like a depth 
of his spirit. And so God just wants you to dig in. He wants you to search for these things. Like I would reveal myself to you. He wants you to just ask him. So we have that. And then, so that's the final, that's about that. But then I also know that God, um, God was also highlighting this very strongly about Nigeria. So Nigeria is stepping into the new. Nigeria is stepping into the new. Um, and I just read what I had God say regarding Nigeria, which was what I felt that God would have us share. Um, I had the spirit of God say that we need to let go of our vain imaginations and ideas of how his word will come to pass, like we've talked about before. We need to partner with his will and know what looks good to our senses. God is showing up as Jehovah Shabbat, which is the God that was the, host, the Lord of the host of armies. He's worrying for the soul of Nigeria and is involved in every single aspect of everything that we do. And so we need to just release everything to God and allow his word come to pass. Another thing that God was highlighting regarding Nigeria was that when we begin to enter into the new in Nigeria, that we might also think that God is punishing us because it's a shaking, because it's something different. And so we might start to complain, just, you know, how um, God gave the Israelites manna. And if you know the meaning of manna, manna means what is it? So when they give the Israelites manna, they're like, what is this? And that's why it's called manna. <laughs> so we also need to position ourselves for the know that when God gives us something different, we stabilize our feet in it and we do start screaming manna like the Israelites. And yeah, I'm almost done. And this is the final slide. So we're going to just pray for Nigeria. And um, in this slide, we're going to say, God, we let go of our desires and we choose your ways. What I um, We don't think anything is bad or good because all things work together for good for our country. And so we choose you whether it looks bad or good for we know all things work together for good. We stand in alignment with you and partner with you, God. Let your will be done. And also, God, we pray that you prepare our hearts so that we accept all that you're doing and we trust you. We say yes to our land being fruitful and reaping the harvest of the land. Thank you, God. And yeah, we've come to the end of teaching moments. Yay, Mrs. Melwi, she's done it, she's done it, she's done it. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Naomi, that was so beautiful. How long ago? I mean, I don't think you ever bothered when I said you were going to take teaching moments. Like all of us, it's like freak out. Just like, let's do it. Thank you very much, Naomi and Margaret. This was really beautiful. Thank you for your vulnerability. Thank you for the simplicity, you know, and... I think it's my favorite part of teaching moments where people like get very um, vulnerable and share their story. Thank you so much. It resonates. I'm. I am sure you can see it in the chat box. It resonates so much with me. I love people are able to like say, "Oh, that sounds like me." You know. Um, I just think that one of the things that stood out for me was also uncertainty and peace, and that was um, that was like written in bold. For me like I'm like okay yeah that's that's one of the things I can say is my main um what's it called learning point my and I also think that now become the strength with which I work with God like now I'm okay to be at peace and to be uncertain the next moment I don't know how it's a crazy thing that's the only word I can say it had happened to me yesterday one moment I'm like God has a plan for this. God does not love this. For this. God, and then there's my mom, like, really cry. Like, I don't know. I, I, I'm telling you, like, literally, my husband watched and said, Can I have my lunch? And I went to serve him lunch. And I came back and, like, you know what? God really does this. And God really, you know, he has this plan. He get, I have peace in my heart. Holy Spirit said, This is how I'm supposed to go. And I go, I don't go. I go. I, that cycle went on for like three or four times. And that's typically how it is when I'm like believing or entering into the new for something. And I think that if we close our eyes to think about how God speaks about strength and courage, please hold on. Baby, go back to bed. Okay. How God speaks about strength and courage, then we will know that it's not like um more and more thing if you say be strong and courageous because things will come that will test your strength things will come that will test your courage you know so Naomi thank you 
for highlighting the spaces and that was so good. I don't know if anybody has comments, questions, feedback, reactions. Okay, I think Kaklani has her hands off first. So I'm going to ask you, Ms. Kalani, you can unmute now. Yes, good, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much, Naomi. And um, honestly speaking, um, my mind is blown because I, I, I thought I couldn't make teaching moment today because I slept maybe like 4 a.m. So I thought, you know what, well, there's no way I'm going to wake up for time for it. So when my alarm went off, I was like, oh, it can't be morning yet. It can't be time yet. And I thought, okay, I'll just miss it and I will catch the replay. But you know, the sleep disappeared from my eyes instantly. And I knew God wanted me to be, you know, to, to get on it. So I got on it and I was like, you know, the thing you said that really struck me was that God will not give you the next instruction until you obey the first. And I think that's what God wanted me to come and hear. Because honestly speaking, I've been, I mean, I knew the instructions he gave me, but I've been putting different timelines on it. I've been like, okay, God, when this is in place, when that is in place, when this is in place. And the minute you just said that, I was like, okay, God, I'm sorry. I'm just going to obey you. I'm just going to get with it now. No more stories from me. No more excuses from me, you know? So God bless you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ms. Glenn. That was so beautiful. I'm glad you could join. Naomi, I, I have a question for you, to be honest. And um, if any other person has comments, please. So because I have an idea of your nonchalantness, okay? And I've also seen how that you now let go and you're now this Nabi prophet, this Nabi teacher that just goes on and on. I remember that <laughs> one of the first discussions we ever had was how that somebody was like calling you out to talk too much or asking you too much question. And I'm like, nah, who me now? Kilo day. How has that evolved for you? How do you feel that something that you feel like is your personality, how you are now coming into this newness and God, you know, how it is that God is not just bringing you into the new, he's now bring, asking you for your personality too. Like, God, if you want, let's do this new thing together. Don't ask me for this kind of, don't make me talk too much. Don't make me come out too much. Don't, I want, yes, I can follow you and I like to do it quietly. How have you been able to navigate that? I, I like the I like your question because just last week, God dragged me on mentoring, and He started talking to me about like how um you have mentors, but like you also need to sit down with other people. And I remember I'm like me. Do you see the plenty of things happening in my own life that you can't be mentoring somebody? And like he just dragged this, dragged this, and it looked like I jumped on the call. I'm, anytime like God says, I'm like, let's jump on the call. And I just talk with that person. But then I've also come to realize that my personality is, is can I cannot say my personality is like important to my is, is myself based on what God is doing. So Tommy says this thing where Elijah was the person that God used this personality. So like God expressed himself, God lived in Elijah and then God now started expressing himself through Elijah's personality. And so I've come to the place where I'm like, my personality, I don't, I, I, please, you should not stress me. I'm not in the mood to be doing too much English with anybody. But then if I know that God wants to express himself in that, I would release myself to that. But I don't know if it would ever become my norm that like I would sit down or I don't I don't think it would ever become my norm where like I would just do that. But I think that like if I feel like God is there or God wants to express himself, I would never hold back from it. So I'm like, if God is doing something, if God says let's mentor, if God says let's talk to people, then I would show up and just be talking and talking and talking and talking. And if not, I would be quiet and be observing. So um uh, yeah, like quiet and observing. That's so good. I think I like the word when you said I would show up. If it says this is what we should do, then I'll show up for him. Um, Jay has a question in the chart. It says, how do you navigate feeling like you have been sidetracked from God's plan? Like one feels like they have gone completely off track and feels the confirmation that they screw things off. Is there such a thing as irreversible derailment? You have your question for you, Miss Nehoi. Right, the thesis. 
I was thinking if Bruno asked me questions, but I mean, let's ask the Holy Spirit. I think that there is, I'm not sure if there's anything like irre- irreversible. I think that sometimes we miss pivotal cycles in our lives. We miss important doors that are open to us. But then I also think that God is really merciful. And even if you are in misalignment, which as I saw that question, I sort of saw like, um, I sort of saw like a building where instead of it to be straight, it now becomes like half of it is like facing the other side and half of it is facing the other side. And it's supposed to be like one of those tall buildings in those places. And that is misalignment. So if you feel like you are misaligned from the promises of God, all you have to do is constantly sit down with your Holy Spirit and sit down with God and say, God, please align me back to your wills. And one of the reasons why sometimes we misalign or move away from God's promises is as a result of an issue of surrender or an issue of submission so we are not fully submitted to what God is doing and so we just move away so you need to repent of that you need to also like submit and surrender and say God anyhow you do it I'm down for it I'm game for it and in that way God puts you back on the right track so even if you're like moving left God moves you back into the right and God is merciful God would always, even if you don't carry all of the bounty or all of the things that were supposed to be for that season, God will always say, let me give you some trickle or let me give you a part of it so you can still partake. So you can still partake, sorry, excuse me. So you can still partake of that regardless. That is so good, Nehomi. That is so good. I, I And I think that another, I just would like to add that God is constantly also chasing us. I mean, as soon as you were talking, the first thing that came to my mind was the story of Abraham. We could have said that when God said Abraham should like wait on him and birth him a child of promise, and then they went ahead with this Ishmael Aga runs, it could have been like they were out of alignment. But Whenever we wake up this morning, to be honest, and we say, God, I'm ready. I've been out of, I feel like I've been out of alignment with you. And I think that that's where the stories in the scripture that has to do with the um, the prodigal son, him going after the one person, because God is constantly going after that one. So JV, I don't think there's an irreversible derailment. Uh, I feel like the moments we wake up and say, God, and now I feel that even at this very moment that that question is going out, so somebody is in that kind of situation and say, God, I just shift myself to be in perfect alignment with you. I repent from the places where I've been off track. That is the place where the tracks get repaired immediately and we are on track. That is the place right there, you know? So yeah, and and now I think that that should also be like, uh, I know that you had said that, some of the days you felt like you compared what I heard versus what's happening. Like, what did I do? I don't know if you had had like a personal situation where you felt like, okay, I don't know if that suffices. Like I derailed and how you came back into alignment. Sometimes it's just as much as saying that, oh God, I did that. Okay, I'm sorry. And I, I don't know how you navigated that. If you like have a personal story and if that suffices, some of those experience suffices as answering this question. I think that particular one that you said, like, what can everybody hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, because I plugged my iPods. I think what you said about like what I did versus what I had, that is like a very important story of obedience where you're like, did I miss what it is that I was supposed to be doing wrong or did I misplace somewhere? And I remember like in that story, like, I had like sticky notes. I'm like, what did I do? What did I hear? And I remember like just sitting down and saying, okay, if God said, um, business analytics a problem masters why am I going into MB and it was that point where like like I said I'm like god I've messed up I think I've screwed things and now they've denied me even though you're saying let's go to school like I've already moved out of the plan so I'm like how do we get back into that plan I remember like god giving other instructions like I don't think I had rough like clearly but me I knew that like I needed to go back and reapply so even though it looked as if application deadlines were over I was like, I'm still going to do this just to like put myself. And I think it was maybe that step forward of saying, let me still move or let me still obey regardless. Like I might have missed it, but let me try. And in that situation, I think that was what helped like. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Naomi. Our time has been well spent. Any more questions or comments? P, are you still there? Yes, I am. Oh, yes. Yeah. Let's hear from you. 
Hey, um, no, me thanks a lot. You did really, really good. And thank you for bringing it and breaking it down the way you did. I thank you for your Navi nature. You know, with Navi prophets, really, it's as though they connect their their thoughts to God's engine. Mm -hmm. So they, they're just speaking as they're seeing and hearing directly without processing it. And uh, um, when you talk about God, God walks through our emotions, our personalities and all. You know, it's it's really true, especially for Nabi prophets. So it behoves us to really make sure our emotions and our personalities are not uh, packaged well that God can flow through. Otherwise, once God flows through, he's going to reveal everything. He's just going to reveal everything because he's coming in through, coming in direct, you know. Um, and and it's, it's always good to just listen to or watch Naomi prophesy because she's just... She prophesies that she talks, just just talks, just keeps talking for 20 hours. You know, I have to remind her, Naomi, you have to go queue for fuel and get uh, the cash from ATM or you can't keep us here till two o'clock. <laughs> she can just be talking and talking and talking. Naomi, so thanks for bringing it in. I, I really appreciate that. And I also want to acknowledge um, a couple of folks here. Number one being um, uh, Auntie Abe. Uh, Baker says, um, Professor Emma, OJ is here as well. You know, and Timo joined as well. I mean, you, you see these ladies take notes, you know. They have, they have I believe their, their youngest child is older than Naomi, you know, but they're willing to learn from Naomi and open their hearts and were able to pick three, four things that they can walk away with. You know, and I want to encourage everybody here as well. It's 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 not the who or or the how it's or what's being said. It's just let Holy Spirit pick something from you, from what's being said and impart into your heart, because He does speak through anybody, and He doesn't have any respect of persons at all. Um, thank you so much, Naomi. God bless you. I really appreciate the the new thing that the Lord is going to be doing. Thank you. Thank you, P. Thank you very much, P. Yeah, that's all right. I mean, the, the nabiness in you. I really love this money. Auntie Abby has sent me a message to say that I love Naomi's slides. And I told her that I told you that yeah, when you first started. Soft. It's really soft and nice. Where did you get those pictures yes. from? Is it from Canva or where? Yes, it was from Canva. And then my friend did some things on Illustrator. And the text, the text were really soft and nice. I like the text. The uh, not text, the fonts. The fonts were Thank nice. You. I was learning some new lingo that you young people use day or day. I didn't know there was something like yeah, that. I you know, that's one of the reasons that we bring on. We we reduce the average age on this <laughs> this teaching moment so we can we can pick up some raining slants and not be surprised when I go out and people are using these things and I'm looking at them. What are you guys talking about? You know, I saw another one. Uh, there's something about sense. You, there was one you had about sense. And, uh, I'm like, gosh, she even put it in slides. <laughs> I'm like to emphasize it. <laughs> <laughs> well done, well done. Thank you, Naomi. Thank you, Pia. Thank you very much, Naomi. Um, and thank you, everyone, for joining. It's been a very productive Saturday morning. For people that went to the video, you know, I know what sacrifices have been. Some of us, like, still had some good um, sleep. Yeah. Yeah, so you love my head, Gianti. I, I removed my hair last night. That's why. Next week, uh, <laughs> next week, Saturday, we have... Um, the gentleman Oluwato Belasaji, and it's going to be here with his lovely wife. Toby, please bring the mini York along. And then on the 18th of February, we have Oluwato Ashe the third. And on the 25th, we have the young man awesome. Ojumo, it's going to be exciting. Yes, I'm looking forward to Toby. Last time that Toby took, I mean, I could never forget. Toby was one that was talking about offense, that the world is volatile. Since then, I started like giving myself sense when I go out that it's combustible out there. And literally, it's almost like that in Nigeria right now. So you don't want anybody offending you. So next week will be exciting. Thank you so much for joining, everyone. It's been a wonderful time. Let's have the rest of the Saturday resting and enjoying time with family.
Have a good one. Thank you. Bye, everyone.